Just I want to start why I choose this insulin resistant because the concept is for many years, but it's still confusing. So I want to go through the historical background, giving a hint on the epidemiology, clinical presentation, and then how to assess and manage. Here we can see that it was since 1921 when the firstly the animal uh, uh, insulin was produced from animal pancreas and up till 36 when the concept of insulin resistance was first uh, introduced, introduced. Then in 1979, it, uh, glucose clamp technique was introduced by Defronzo and others to measure the insulin resistance. And 1995, in 1895, the concept of homeostasis model was introduced. And then until now, we are craving for understanding more and more uh, diabetes pathology, pathophysiology, and treatment. But in 2012, they recognized the insulin resistance as a hidden danger, hidden danger because if untreated, it can lead to serious health consequences as discussed before the cardiovascular disease and others. And they said that interventions to improve insulin sensitivity can go a long way toward improving overall health. So if we can improve insulin resistance, we can get a, a good step in improving overall health of the subject. In 2020, it's still difficult to define what's insulin resistance. If we think, what's insulin resistance? Simply, it's an impairment of the biologic response to insulin in the target tissues, primary the liver, muscle, and adipose. There is no clear-cut definition, actually, of insulin resistance. But for those who are using the exogenous insulin, it's defined as people need more than one unit per kg per day to maintain glycemic control, they have insulin resistance. For those who have more than 200 units of exogenous insulin, they have severe insulin resistance. The metabolic consequence of insulin resistance results in many problems like hyperglycemia, hypertension, dysglycemia, and visceral adip adiposity. This problem is not rare. Actually, it was estimated in the states that it affects up to 24% of adults above 20 years old. It increases to 40% for those over 50 years, and it can affect up to a third of patients with Alzheimer's disease. The presentation actually varies between people. Some people will, ha will, will have only obesity. Sometimes, as we will discuss more details, non-obese people have insulin resistance. But it can also reach to the cardiovascular problem, hypertension, the type 2 diabetes, the metabolic associated liver disease, others like cancer in different organs, hyperfiltration in the kidney, polycystic ovary, and more recently, the central nervous system is also there is now what's called central insulin resistance, which is implicated impaired energy homeostasis, blurred brain development and memory function, and Alzheimer's disease, sometimes called diabetes type 3. If we think about the mechanism of insulin resistance, we can say that in the cellular effect of insulin occurs through two main post receptors, uh, pathways. This is one of the phosphatidyl inositol kinase, PI3K, and the mitogene activated protein kinase, MAPK. Insulin resistance affects PI3K, which will result in the metabolic defects. But still, the MAPK is still intact, and the hyperinsulinemia can affect this pathway, causing uh, cancer in many organs. And here we can say that the insulin resistance is in the core, in the crossroad of obesity, metabolic dysfunction, cognitive dysfunction, and obesity-related malignancy. Obesity through the mitochondrial dysfunction and endoplasmic reticulum dysfunction with adiposity uh, dysfunction as discussed before in our in other lectures, get microbiota dysbiosis, chronic inflammation will affect the insulin resistance. This through the PI3PK pathway impairment will cause hypertension, dyslipidemia, dysglycemia. When the brain it affects the cognitive dysfunction, impaired learning and the memory, and then the hyperinsulinemia will act on the intact MAPK pathway, will cause obesity-related malignancy. At the same time, this pathway will cause more and more body weight, more and more obesity, and will go into vicious circle. And the only way to stop this one 
is the lifestyle factors. Here, simply, the insulin, after attachment to the receptor, will pass through the insulin receptor substrate, affect the BI3K, which will cause the release of the uh, GLUT4 secreting the physical to the surface, causing glucose to enter the cell for glycolysis, glycogenesis, lipid lipogenesis, protein synthesis, and it will stop lipolysis. On the other hand, if the patient develops insulin resistance, we can see here that there is deposition of uh, 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 microvages with release of inflammatory cytokines, and at the same time, less movement of the glu glu uh, glucose uh, transport. This will cause increased free fatty acid production. These cytokines, uh, inflammatory cytokines with the free fatty acid affect the muscle will decrease, will decrease entry of the glucose. At the same time, it will affect the liver. It will, co will cause increased gluconeogenesis and decreased glycogenesis. Uh, so obesity, can cause insulin resistance through chronic inflammation, mitochondrial dysfunction, gut microbiota dysbiosis, and more importantly, the adipose extracellular matrix remodeling. And on the other hand, insulin resistance can affect the metabolic dysfunction, hypertension through enhanced renal sodium reabsorption and hypertrophy uh, resistance blood vessels, dyslipidemia through the enhancement of the hepatic flux of free fatty acids, but recently more, import, more important notes on the central effect of insulin, hyperinsulinemia can result in degeneration and irreversible impairment of memory. Then it will affect the blood brain barrier itself, causing less insulin to the, to the brain. This will increase the levels of cerebral beta amyloid and tau protein, which is associated with uh, Alzheimer's disease. This to show that the insulin resistance is at the crossroad of obesity and associated diseases. Here, the factors that mediate effects of obesity are chronic inflammation and others, the metabolic hypertension, dyslipidemia, dysglycemia, non-alcoholic fatty disease, cognitive affection, cognitive dysfunction, learning, deficiency, memory impairment, and there is possibility to reverse or to ameliorate this effect through the lifestyle, physical activity, optimized dietary fat, uh, limited dietary carbohydrates, and optimized sleep. Here, it's not obesity, as mentioned before. It's not obesity per se, it is the adipose tissue dysregulation. And this very nice study published in 2012 showed that it's not obesity, but rather the adipose tissue dysfunction. They studied the, the, the size of the cell, hypertrophy of the adipose tissue, and the ectopic deposition of adipose tissue in the viscera, in the muscles, and the liver, which are important. A, a nice study uh, published in 2022, they studied the insulin resistant in population with heart failure, but without diabetes or overweight or hypertension. And so they found that in non-diabetic, non-overweight, nor motensive patients heart failure, Insulin resistance was higher, so there is direct link between insulin resistance and heart failure. So heart insulin resistance is very important actually clinically. What are the different causes or risk factors? Actually, they can divide it into acquired, hereditary, or mixed. But most patients are the acquired group, excessive due to excess dysfunction in adipose tissue, aging, physical inactivity, nutritional imbalance, some medications, glucotoxicity, and lipotoxicity. There are some genetic uh, 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 syndromes like myotonic syndromes, ataxia, ataxia telangiectasia, lipodystrophy, polycystic over disease, but, the, but the, uh, uh, the acquired form is the more common. How to assess insulin resistance? Maybe we have to know that we have different methods, not only homeostasis insulin resistance, which we are using in our clinic, there are many methods. Some are using the steady state analysis of glucose and insulin, but others, they study the dynamic testing after glucose introduction. This table to show that the direct measure is the hyperinsulinemic aglycemic clamp. In this, in this test, we are injecting, infusing insulin to hyperphysiological level and to prevent causing hypoglycemia, we are also infusing glucose. And from the steady state of insulin and glucose, using different equations, we can measure insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance. There are other, some tests like insulin suppression tests, uh, but there are simple surrogate indices like 
uh, those derived from fasting steady state, the homeostasis model. In this test, just we'll draw, we'll, we'll draw a, a simple fasting sample and measure fasting insulin and fasting glucose and multiply and divide then by 22.5. It's called the homo insulin resistance. The reverse of the log of this equation is called the quickie, the quantitative insulin sensitivity. This is study the steady state condition, but we can also use the oral glucose tolerance test after giving uh, the patient 75 gram, gram of glucose. We can measure also insulin and glucose, and we can from using some indices like Matsuda index or gut index, we can get uh, the uh, insulin resistance. Here to show that we are in home insulin resistance, which, are, which, are, which is widely used throughout the world. We are multiplying fasting insulin by fasting glucose, dividing by 22.5. 22 Why 22.5? Because it is the product of the normal plasma insulin and the normal fasting plasma glucose, so that this can compare with the ideal normal individual. Still, there are other surrogate markers. We can use triglyceride. It was shown that in pre-diabetes, the triglyceride more than 150 gram, more likely to have insulin resistance. The percentage, the ratio of triglyceride to HDL ratio, if it's above than 3.5 in males or 2.5 in females, indicate insulin resistance, but this was not applicable in African-American individuals. So now, how can we evaluate uh, insulin resistance actually? It should be clear that measures of insulin resistance have not been integrated into clinical guidelines. There is no guidelines integrating the insulin resistance. So as a result of the presence of insulin resistance, it generally inferred, suspected, or you can detect it from the clinical presentation from the different components of the metabolic syndrome and insulin resistant syndrome. Here, now we are the, entering the era of the precision medicine diabetes. We can use the genetic background, the different clustering of patients to know which patients with insulin resistance can develop complications while others will not develop. Why some obese people develop insulin resistance while others not, while some non-obese people can develop insulin resistance. In the management, still the cornerstone is the lifestyle with less sodium, less fat, calorie restriction, attention to the glycemic index of food. Physical activity is very important. Regarding the pharmacological intervention, again, we should uh, address that there is no medication or FDA approved to treat insulin resistance, but we have metformin, which tackle insulin resistance, is approved for pre-diabetes and diabetes and maybe a polycystic over disease. GLP-1 agonist, as discussed in diabetes, sometimes in obese people, even without diabetes, Sodium glucose co-transporter two inhibitors with, which can decrease weight and can help in uh, ameliorating insulin resistance and TCDs which tackle PPAR gamma receptors, but they have uh, some side effects. Even surgery, by bariatric surgery, we can decrease the fat content and we can decrease insulin resistance. Still, we have some uh, in investigational drugs acting on fat oxidation in muscle and liver and muscle mass like myostatin, which are still in phase one, two, or three, they, they are not yet released. What's bothering the patients actually when, come, when they are coming to our clinic is the prognosis. They are afraid and referred from some dietitian or so. They said, go to an endocrinologist to treat you from insulin resistance. So it's, it should be clear that the prognosis of insulin resistance actually is dependent on many factors like the severity of the disease, the pancreatic beta cell function, the hereditary, the susceptibility, and the spectrum of outcome ranges from nothing, mind the insulin resistant, to asymptomatic individual, to individuals with catastrophic cardiovascular or cerebrovascular events. So we depend on the uh, follow-up of the patients until we have more precise data to recognize this patient. I want to finish with the, uh, with the message delivered by ADA in understanding insulin resistance, they said, what can we do about it? Actually getting active is the best way to combat insulin resistance and proper diet and weight loss, the importance of maintaining good eating habits to prevent or diminish insulin resistance is very important. No single or specific diet has been proved. Low carb, high fiber is the most important. 
no medications, again, are specifically approved to treat insulin resistance. The most important sentence which we have to say is don't give up. It needs continuous support, continuous education, continuous follow-up, and thank you very much.